It's Don't Go. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Pritchard for another episode of Pritchard's Podcast for Civics. So we're at Article 3, the judicial branch, third branch in our Constitution, the last one. We're going to focus on the courts as before, but we're going to look at the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land. So we have three levels of federal courts, the district courts, the U.S. Courts of Appeal, and the Supreme Court. And because the Supreme Court is the highest court, it's extra special, and we're going to treat it with its own video. Now, the judges that you see there are the nine judges or justices that serve on the Supreme Court. And the man in the middle there is Chief Justice John Roberts. As Chief Justice, Roberts is in charge of the Supreme Court. He presides over the Supreme Court. Um, it also means that whenever the president is sworn into office, it's the Chief Justice who gets to swear him in or her. And also in the case of uh, a presidential impeachment, impeachment trial, it's the uh, Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice who presides over that trial in the Senate. As you're aware, these judges serve for life. Now, why would they do that? Why would our founding fathers do that? Because when the king appointed judges back during colonial times, they owed their allegiance and their loyalty to the king, not always to the law. But these judges, because they're appointed for life, that means that the president, no one can touch them or pressure them to choose a certain way or to rule a certain way. And by the way, what is it with these British judges and their wigs? What do they kind of remind you of? Yeah, that's what I thought. And as you already know, there are no qualifications to be a Supreme Court or a federal judge in the Constitution. There are no such requirements, which means anyone can't even short either. So you want to be a judge. Well, if that's the case, then good luck because you're, you're going to have to have the president pick you or appoint you or nominate you. Um, he's going to pick somebody that he feels is well qualified. And of course, the Senate is going to approve or confirm that pick. So not too many people are going to make it through the process, and uh, you have to be pretty well qualified, know the law well, to become a judge. I know. What you're saying is, Mr. Pritchard, we already know all this stuff, but it doesn't hurt to hear things twice. So now we're going to get into more the nitty-gritty of what the Supreme Court does by looking at its power of judicial review. And that's the power of the Supreme Court and the lower courts, to a lesser extent, to look at the laws and actions of the president and different things that happen in this country and determine the constitutionality of those laws and those actions, how they measure up to the Constitution. So let's look at something like segregation. Segregation was the separation of races that was made possible back in the day by uh, another Supreme Court decision. It was called Plessy versus Ferguson. We're going to learn about that later. But what that decision did was it made it legal for people to be separated by race. It took another Supreme Court decision called Brown versus Board of Education. We will also learn about that down the road. And that actually reversed the, the uh, discriminatory policies of segregation and brought about desegregation. And of course, changed our society forever. So looking at our federal court system, what we have is a three-tiered system of jurisdiction. Um, the jurisdiction is basically where the power authority to administer justice lies. Uh, with district courts, it lies within um, uh, areas within a state. With courts of appeal, it lies within a larger area. And then, of course, the Supreme Court is, is the entire country. And as you know, our three-tiered system also has built into it the ability for a person to take their case to a higher court called an appeal. So if you're unhappy with the ruling of a district court, you can appeal it to a court of appeals and even higher than that, to the U.S. Supreme Court. So looking at the U.S. Supreme Court, when a case comes its way, it's coming from one of the lower courts. And parties who have cases in those lower courts can petition for a writ of certiorari, which really is just a request to have the Supreme Court hear your appeal. Now, the court gets thousands of these petitions every year. But because the court is only one court and it's only nine people on it, um, there's only so many cases they can hear a year. So they make sure not to overload themselves by taking on too many cases, and they end up hearing probably about a round of 100 cases um, every year. To have your case picked by the Supreme Court is, is special. 
And so what the court does, it puts out a writ of certiorari, which is an order for the lower court to hand over the case to the Supreme Court so it can review the case um, as per its power of judicial review. So when the time comes, the court will listen to the case, listen to both sides, present the arguments, usually in oral arguments. Um, oftentimes the judges, justices will get the uh, case beforehand so they can read up on it. And so they listen, they ask questions, um, but there are no witnesses, there's no evidence presented, it's just lawyers presenting their sides in the case. And what the Supreme Court justices will do is they'll look at these cases, anything from free speech cases to freedom of religion cases, cases involving maybe gay marriage, or maybe even one day the legalization of marijuana. But all of these cases require the judges to eventually put down a vote. This vote is based on their understanding of the law and how it applies to this case. And those who are the majority, it's called the majority opinion, and those who are on the losing side, the, the lesser side, the minority side, are called the dissenting opinion. And when they put down their vote, it often comes down to a 5-4 to four decision or a 6-3 to three decision. Of course, this is why there's nine justices, so it's always an odd number and never a tie. But in the end, um, a ruling is made. And a ruling is essentially the court's decision on a case. This makes these decisions by the court extremely important. It is the only court, it's the highest court. So once it makes a decision, it has far-reaching effect on the country. And these important decisions set precedents, which really helps everyone to understand what to do down the road in the future when something like this might come up again. It's an action that serves as a guide. So take, for example, some very famous cases. Uh, you've heard of several of these. For instance, Miranda versus Arizona. When a person's arrested, they have to be told their rights. That's all from this one case. Uh, then there's the case of TLO versus New Jersey. We'll be learning about this later, about a girl who was searched at school and how it still affects you to this day. And then there's Texas versus Johnson, a very famous freedom of speech and expression case involving flag burning. So... We're going to be learning about a lot more down the road, and um, I hope you guys are um, going to be studying up for the future test and going back and looking at these notes again. So thanks for listening, and so long.